Hello and welcome to part two of this tutorial about the microcorg. Um, we left we left off looking at oscillator one in. Uh, we finished with uh, uh, looking at uh, part of oscillator one in at the end of part one. Um, the first knob allows you to select uh, the different waveforms. Um, we saw how uh, control one and control two allow you to change the character of, of the waveform. Um, and I think that we were uh, looking at how it affected the sine wave. So let's have a look at how it affects the Vox wave, which is supposed to uh, have some of the character of a human um, uh, of a human voice. So let's see. Okay, so this is uh, everything is at zero. So let's see what that sounds like. Okay, uh, let's turn up uh, the first control. Let's see what that does. A bit less. Let's see, like so. I'm guessing that the control two is going to add some modulation, so let's have a look at that. So I've put in some of, of this uh, control one in there, and let's see with the modulation what happens. Awesome. You can clearly see how uh, that changes the sound over time. Um, and essentially what the modulation does is instead of having to be turning that first knob to change the sound, it sort of does that for you. So that's quite nice. Let me just move the camera so I can get to the keyboard a little bit easier. Okay, this should be better. Yes, a little bit better. Okay, so uh, let's continue. That was the, the Vox wave. Uh, with the digital waveform, the first knob doesn't do anything. Uh, sorry, the so with digital waveform, control one doesn't do anything. Control two allows you to select the different waveforms. And there's 64 of them, each one unique. OK. Um, moving on to noise which I believe initially, when I s demonstrated it, you couldn't really hear anything. So let's see if we change the control one and control two. Uh, what happens? Aha. Uh -huh. We get some noise, and control two is going to introduce some form of change over time, of course. Or not. Okay, tell you what, what if I load up the uh, manual so that I know what I'm talking about? Um, although it is quite nice to figure out what each of the controls does as we go along. So let me do that right now. Okay. And while that is loading, perfect. So for the Vox Wave, just to uh, go back. The Vox wave, uh, that first um, control modified the waveform, and the second one added some uh, um, modulation to the uh, to the waveform. Uh, with noise, um, control one sets the cutoff frequency. So basically, it uh, sets a filter on the noise. So. Here you can't hear anything because the filter is obviously completely closed, so it's not allowing any of the sound to pass through. However, if we open up the filter, we get some sound. Now we can get the sound to be sort of darker um, by closing it up.
or brighter by opening it up. Okay, uh, control two controls, oh, the resonance. So essentially, uh, this is just the uh, control one and control two act as a filter. Um, so, so what I could do is turn down the cutoff point of the filter, turn up the resonance, which creates a peak right at the point where the filter tapers off. If I increase the resonance, you'll you'll see hear the effect. Do you see that? Without resonance, um, it's a very different sound with resonance. Almost sounds like the wind from some northern region. Okay. So, anyways, that's uh, helping us already to set up a sound. So, let me get started. Um, I would quite like to do a sound with a sine wave, because I haven't done that in a long time. So, let's do that. Let's see. Okay, let's turn that off. Pure sine wave. Let's add some cross modulation. Brighten up the sound, maybe a little bit too much. Okay, that's nice. I like that. A little bit of movement with uh, control two. That's a little bit too much, maybe. Okay, now you wonder what actually controls the um, or sets the the rate of the modulation in control two. Well, control two is linked to LFO one. LFO is a low frequency oscillator, which means uh, in in the first part I said the oscillators create sound. Um, you also have low frequency oscillators which create um, oscillations which are below the the hearing range, so they create a waveform that you can't quite hear, but that is quite useful as a modulation signal to affect different parts of the synthesizer. So LFO1, hey, we're going to jump straight into the LFO. Uh, just like an oscillator, you can, check, you can select the waveform, okay? So uh, triangle waveform, it means that it's going to create a triangle waveform, and then whatever you direct that signal towards is going to change that with that kind of cyclical triangle waveform. I could do a, a saw waveform, which is probably going to create quite a rhythmic kind of effect to whatever parameter I link it to, to create that cyclical modulation. Um, and square is going to kind of create a very binary kind of on-off, on-off effect. So we could try some of that. Let's see how that affects the sound. Maybe a square one, because that's going to be quite um, uh, quite noticeable. Um, now, so now I'm reading off the chart here, LFO1, the waveform. Okay, uh, the second knob controls key sync. It's merely turning it on, uh, uh, sorry, off. Uh, TN is, I believe it syncs it to whenever you hit a key. Uh, that's to do with the vocoder, I guess. Um, okay, so. Oh, and then the third knob um, is to do with the tempo sync. So that means that you can synchronize the LFO. Since it's all about creating change over time, if you have a tempo that you're working with, it's probably, it might be useful to synchronize the LFO to the tempo that you're working with so that the change doesn't drift out of beat to your song. Um, since we're not working with a song, I'd rather keep that off. If it's on, then you 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 know then you're working with um, musical intervals. You know, uh, six uh, sixth notes, eighth notes, um, twelfth notes, sixteenths, um, and so on. Okay. Um, if I turn it off, then it's a sort of arbitrary unit. Um, okay, so let's set that to pretty fast rate. 
it's a square wave. Let's see what that does to the sound. So you can you can hear that. Now I'm back to the to the oscillator. Okay, so I have a little bit of that cross modulation happening, and I have a little bit of the um, of the uh, LFO modulation being routed into that. You can see that if I turn it down, it's more subtle. If I turn it up, you really get that on off kind of like a switch that's being switched on and off very quickly, yeah? Uh, I quite like it, like that soft. Perfect. Okay, so that's oscillator one. Um, I'm creating a single layer patch. On a single layer, I have two oscillators that are available. So now I'm gonna go to oscillator two. Oscillator two has some of the same waveforms and it has some different features. So let's have a look at, at what's available. So now in oscillator 2 you have your saw wave, square wave, and triangle wave, and nothing else. Uh, so it's, uh, it has less waveforms than, than oscillator 1. However, um, it does have the ability, let's check the chart here, um, to basically modulate oscilla oscillator 2 with oscillator 1. So running the two together through a ring modulator, okay, which kind of creates very metallic sounds. Um, sorry, so that's with a second knob. You can change the the way that the oscillators, oscillator one and oscillator two, cross modulate each other. Ring modulator is option one. Uh, sync. So that means, um, let me explain that a little bit. Basically, um, you could have the, oscillate, the two oscillators kind of tuned slightly differently, or maybe um, they have different waveforms, and the, and the different waveforms uh, in some ways have timing variances, or the width of the, of the cycle of a waveform is, is different. What sync does is it forces, I'm going to say, the waveform of oscillator 2 to start when the waveform of oscillator 1 starts, so it, it forces that. Um, and of course, I could just turn it off, and then just the 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 sounds of the two oscillators are just mixed together, and I could change the levels of the two sounds um, in the mixer section. So right now, actually, if I'm going to use oscillator two, I should turn up the volume of oscillator two in the mixer section. So I'm going to turn it up to a midpoint, and then I'm going to turn down the oscillator one volume to also to a midpoint. So let's see what that sounds like. Let me turn down oscillator. Um, let me turn down the volume of oscillator two all the way down, just so that you see. Now in oscillator two, I have a saw wave. Um, if I turn it up, you see that it's quite bright, and it adds to the sound of oscillator one. Now, let's to make things more interesting. What I can do is I can change the sync. Uh, sorry, the um, oscillator modulation. So let's put a ring modulator to mess up the sound between the two oscillators. Not much change. But then let's see what these knobs do, okay? So um, we're still in oscillator 2 now. Um, this knob affects the semitones. So you can detune oscillator or you can change the, uh, the tuning of oscillator 2 independently of oscillator 1. So oscillator 1 could be at a certain pitch and then I can change the pitch of oscillator 2 independently. Let's see what that sounds like without the ring modulator first. So uh, right now it's at 0. I'm going to um, 12, which is basically an octave higher. You can hear that. Or I could do minus 12, an octave lower. And you can see that. That's actually quite nice. I'm going to keep it like that. OK. And then here, it's a sort of fine tune. So I could just um, detune it a little bit from that um, straight octave um, above, octave below sound. By the way, uh, I mean, you can go any interval here. It doesn't have to be one octave. You can go anywhere in between. But just to keep things simple, I'm going to do that. Ooh, that's quite interesting. Maybe a little bit too much. Okay, 
maybe a little bit. Ah, there we go. Cool. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to change the modulation to the cross modulation between the two oscillators to ring modulator. You see that changes things a little bit. Now I could detune this more. Let's see what that does. Makes things get a little bit dirty, a little bit buzzier. That changes the tuning completely. Okay, let's turn that down a little bit. There we go. I quite like that. Okay, let's do what let's see what sync does. That's quite uh significant. Oh, maybe it's because I was not there we go. Okay. Let's see. Let's go back to ring modulator again. Quite like that, actually. So, ring modulator on here. So that basically means that the uh, sounds of oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 don't just coexist, but they actually um, interplay with each other a little bit. Uh, you can find out more about ring modulators online. Um, the tuning of oscillator 2 has been turned down to minus 12, so an octave lower than oscillator 1. And then I just detuned it a little bit, um, uh, sort of just to add a, a little bit of more variation. And that's what we're left with, this sound. And that's where I'm going to stop at today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.